It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it, and serve the sponge a meal unlike any other. And then, it will grow. Chuck! Hey, Brach! I would have bet my good hand I'd never say this, but thank you. For what? I've caused you nothing but despair. For taking the fall back there, and for exposing the voodoo lady. I don't know what to make of any of it, but now I can focus on saving Elaine and dealing with the pox. It is the very least I could do. But be careful, Guybrush. I'm always careful. This from the guy who proposed to his wife with the cursed engagement ring you stole from my hold? Is that a dig? Is the evil demon pirate LeChuck developing a sense of humor? This is weird. Really, thanks again. You don't need to thank me, my friend. I merely spoke the truth. They say that truth is the greatest barnacle scrubber you know. Where have you been? I thought you were with Elaine. Well, after leaving Spinner K, Elaine and I set out to finish releasing all those monkeys I'd captured. After we were finished releasing the last of them, Elaine caught wind of your trial, went into a poxed rage, seized a passing clam schooner, and made a beeline for Flotsam Island. That's my girl. Needless to say, I took my own vessel and headed after her. But in the middle of the night, my ship was sunk by a rogue wave. I was washed up on an island of cannibals, from whom I deftly escaped using many of the self-same skills you taught me back on the Jerkbait Islands. You know, it's amazing how easily man-eating tribes can be reasoned with. Knowing I needed to get here more than ever, I lashed together a few bits of cannibal leftovers and warthog sinew to build a makeshift raft. Unfortunately, that was soon eaten by the sharks. Oh no! So I swam. I swam as fast as I could for three days and arrived just in time to save me from the gallows. Nicely done, buddy. I can't believe the voodoo lady has been pulling your ghostly slash demonic strings all these years. It came as a shock to me as well, but her diary spells it all out. You, me, Elaine, we're all part of the voodoo lady's malevolent plans. Malevolence is in the eye of the beholder, Guybrush Treepwood. I know this is difficult to understand, but things are not as they seem. No, things seem remarkably convoluted, which is what I've come to expect from you. I've always had your best interests at heart. Well, what about my interests? Without your meddling, I could have lived a normal, happy pirate's life. Ha! The destiny of LeChuck has never been normal. I risked life, limb, and manatee to get La Esponja Grande, and it's a puny, worthless lump. What? Soak up the gargantuan wonder that is La Esponja Grande. That is La Esponja Grande? But wasn't it supposed to hold infinite amounts of voodoo? I know. What a crock. The size of the sponge is meaningless. It is what you do with it that matters. Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, well, you, you fight, fight like, like a... a uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight, buddy. Once I save Elaine, you're next. Don't worry about me. Hey, you! Hello, Treepwood. You sent me on a wild albatross chase for La Esponja Grande and promised me it would cure the pox. But after fending off sexually ambiguous merpeople, a giant manatee, and your crazy ex-boyfriend, what do I get for my trouble? This sorry excuse for a kitchen sponge. La Esponja. Ah, I noticed you strategically left out the grande from this worthless piece of junk. Once it cured my piddly leftover pox, it didn't have enough mojo left to cure Elaine. It's not worthless. It is merely... young. It must be brought to maturity in order to reach its voodoo-absorbing potential. Brought to maturity? How am I supposed to do that? Give it a talk about the sponge birds and sponge bees? Like all infants, La Esponja needs nourishment. It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. 
What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it, and serve the sponge a meal unlike any other. And then, it will grow. Hey, neat. There's a map of the Flotsam Jungle on the cover. No more listening to bees and birds and boars for this mighty pirate. You! Again! Hello, Treepwood. About this feast for the senses? What would you like to know? The first course in the feast for the senses. The napkin. What's up with that? The table must be set with an eye-catching napkin to entice the sponge's hunger. Tell me about the napkin again. The feast must begin with a cloth of such stunning visual stimulation that the sponge will have no choice but to dine. Alright, enough about the feast for now. So, when I was with Dakava, you might have felt something strange happen. Ah. You are no doubt alluding to your brief possession of my physical form. Ha! How did it feel to be the Manipulate Ted instead of the Manipulate Tor for once? It was... curiously liberating. You're weird. Yeah, try not to get executed before I cure Elaine. As you wish. Stan! Threepwood! No hard feelings over all those various civil and criminal charges? Water under the bridge. Great. A bridge with a fast-talking shyster-slash-salesman dangling from it. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose you'd be willing to sell me your eye-bending jacket? Give up my jacket? It'd be like Samson getting a buzz cut, or King Arthur losing Excalibur, or Bluebeard dying himself blonde. Uh-huh. Without my jacket, my salesman Mojo would wither away faster than a hothouse orchid in a pizza oven. So, that's a maybe? Have you seen my wife? Have I? That crazy sea devil hit me up for one of my patented and perfectly passable porcelain power pirate treasure maps, before hightailing it for the jungle. If we're lucky, that thing will keep her going around in circles for weeks. Sure you don't want to sell me your pupil-defying jacket? It's for a good cause. This jacket stays with Stan until it literally falls off my back, Threepwood.
have the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck been put on trial yet? Have they? It's the trial of the century! Eee, eee, eee. Wait, I thought I was the trial of the century! Eee, 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 eee. Yesterday's news, Threepwood. What was that? Huh. Something sure shoved a short sword up his aft sail. Do that? <laughs> Had to pay you back for all the trouble. Found Jacques. He told me. What? He told me. What? What did the monkey tell you? Singe. This must have been broken in the fight between Morgan and DeSinge. I hope the Vol escaped. It's broken. No more bananas. Curse you, banana god. Vampiridae flotsimus sucrosus, the flotsam jungle firefly, are a common sight in flotsam's jungles, which they never leave. Although possessing no natural enemies, the flotsimus sucrosus has a notorious sweet tooth, drawing it inexorably to bodies of sugar water. Looks like the singe is using my hand to make something called the Jeu de Vie. Did the singe murder you too? Did the singe murder you too? Lepidoptera flotsamus accelerus. Like many of its more common cousins, the sharp-toothed flotsam island moth has a penchant for noshing on articles of clothing. Where flotsamus accelerus differs is in the pain of its bites, which can be quite annoying, and the rapidity of its meals. A swarm of flotsam moths can strip a man down to his undergarments in mere seconds, assuming the notoriously finicky moths approve of his wardrobe, of course. The Thakalian wind control device? What is that creep doing with it now?
It's locked. Oh, no. This is where the Marquis keeps all the severed limbs of the pirates he's operated on. Hmm. Hey, you never know when a sack of severed legs is going to come in handy. Or footy, as the case may be. Sorry. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Hair dye. Hey, no poaching. I have called dips. I think I may be lost. Shouldn't there be a creepy voodoo shack right about there? There was. Until they came to arrest that pox spreading voodoo lady. What happened? First came the flames. Poor Senor Nipperkin went up like St. Elmo's fire. Then she emerged from the conflagration, mumbling ancient curses with every regal step. I never forget the baleful stare she fixed me with as she was left well. A look condemning me to a lifetime of suffering, shame, and regret. Spooky. And if that wasn't bad enough, I, I haven't found one bit of cool voodoo stuff in the wreckage. Come on! Mob justice can be so unfair. Looks like the light of the shack's embers has attracted a swarm of jungle moths. That probably explains what happened to the voodoo lady's rug. Whoa! Uh-oh. Hmm. Looks like these finicky moths won't eat a jacket that's encrusted with bacon grease, fish water, and manatee guts. Lucky me. little fellas, check out these high-def duds. Well, that's just great. The lamp's dead. Well, at least Stan's sign is keeping the moths from returning to the jungle. It 
Stan. Skybrush, old pal. What kind of souvenirs could you possibly be making out of the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck? Oh, ye of little faith. Feast your eyes on the all-new People vs. LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady collection. What's that one? That's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu, the Chuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. Hey, now, what's this? A fuzzy flying fan club? Ah! Hey, knock it off, you nutty nibblers! That ah! That hurts! Sweet ah! Fancy ah! Moses! Ah! Well, that was one heck of an experience, eh, Threepwood? It's a good thing old Stan always keeps a few spare jackets in the back office, or I'd be defending my clients in the all together. Say, that's not a bad idea. Stan S. Stan Man, naked attorney at law. You've got nothing to hide, and neither does he. Um... No time to chat, Threepwood. I've got business cards to print. Sweet. You know, when I dreamed of becoming a mighty pirate, I never imagined that one day I'd be tying eye-popping napkins around the non-existent necks of mystical sponges. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Hey, you! Again! Hello, Treepwood. About this feast for the senses? What would you like to know? The antipasta? Explain. With a table set, a powerful aroma must encourage the appetite to grow. I think my nose has been in shock since traversing the inside of a manatee. I'm sure you will find something. All right, enough about the feast for now. What's that artistic abomination? Ah, that be a painting of Flotsam Island's notorious jungle beast, painted by our own Hemlock McGee. Hemlock? Really? Aye, no one knows more about our legendary beastie than old Hemlock.
Hi there, double peg. I hear you may know something about Flotsam's so-called jungle beast. None have seen the jungle beast, but tis the scariest, false, melanous thing you ever didn't see. A dark jungle god that walks the land only by dead of night. Dark jungle god? Aye. T'was said to live within the stomach of the god of death, feasting upon corpses. Until one day, death ate some bad shellfish and upchucked the jungle beast into existence. <sighs> but if you haven't seen it, how do you know it exists? Because it eats. To appease the beast, we've left many a fleshy sacrifice on the jungle altar. By morning, the meat disappears from the altar without a trace. Disappearing meat. Yep, Jungle God's the only explanation. See ya! Alas, poor Hemlock, I knew it, this limb, a leg of infinite toe jam, of most excellent thigh cheese. It hath borne its owner's creaking frame a thousand times, and now how clammy and gross within my grasp it wriggles. Oh well, soup's on. Uh-oh. Weird. The trail didn't go anywhere. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and X marks the. When I get me hands on that plaid coated. Wag. I'm going to rip off his waving arms and beat him to a briny pulp with him. What are you looking at? The secret to eternal life. Le spectre de Grand César. <laughs> Doesn't look like Elaine's in any immediate danger. Hopefully she won't commit any unforgivable atrocities before I finish enlarging my pox curing sponge.
Hmm, the tide must be high. I can almost reach down and touch the well water. Jungle fireflies, nature's little spotlights. Hmm. The fireflies are attracted to the sugar water on the leg. Fascinating, and just a little nauseating. I don't know about mythical jungle beasts, but I always prefer my ritual sacrifices to be slathered in sugar water. I don't know about mythical jungle beasts, but I always prefer my ritual sacrifices to be slathered in sugar water. <laughs> I've lost that she devil. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Serves him right, though. Still, I'd better finish feeding the sponge before Elaine hurts someone I actually care about. Looks like the old Vakalian wind control device has been set to suck again. But what's that tubing around its fingers all about? The mighty pirate hunter tracks his prey via his distinctive firefly attracting spore. That's the legendary jungle beast of Flotsam Island? I haven't got it in me to kill this miserable flesh-rending plant creature thing. Here, boy! Ooh, that looks uncomfortable. But at least he's not snapping at me anymore. Don't worry, you freakish little abomination. Dr. Guybrush will make it all better. Gotcha! Phew! <laughs> that is by far the foulest thing I've ever smelled in all my years of pirating. And that's coming from a guy who's just spent a few days inside a giant manatee. Uh, 
I'm on, little sponge. Eat the nice, smelly anti-pasta. That's a good sponge. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. 